Here are some of the probability rules or probability properties that we're using in this chapter. So the first property will be uh, that the uh, result of any probability question will be between 0 and 1. So the range of values that you will have on answering probability question will always be between 0 and 1. Anything lower and higher than 1 means that your probability result is an error. And the second probability is that the sum of all probabilities of all possible outcomes is equal to 1. So which means if you're going to add up all the possible probability in a, in a sample space, it will all equal to 1. And on the third property, the probability that an event does not occur is 1 minus the probability that the event does occur. And we call it the complement. So if we have P of A prime, it means we're, locked, we're um, talking or looking at the complement of event A, or event A, or no, event A not happening in this particular situation. And these are the probability rules that you need to take note of when you're answering questions involving probability. Now, there are two types of um, events in a probability. We call it independent event and uh, dependent event. So what is, what's the difference between the two? In uh, an independent event, it means that event A is not affected by event B in uh, two events that we're working on in an experiment. So let's say we have uh, an experiment of tossing a coin and we're supposed to toss the coin twice so uh, the probability of getting tails or head on the first toss will still be T or H and on the second toss the probability will still be consistent and will still be the same that's why it's independent the first toss is not affected by the second toss when you're flipping a coin twice so that's why this is an independent event now a dependent event is given by an event A being affected by event B. In this example, I have five red and two blue marbles in the jar. And without replacement, let's find the probability of getting the first red ma marble and the second um, red marble when we pick the marble inside the jar. So your sample space here will be five plus two. So there are a total of seven marbles in a jar, five of them will be red and the other will be 2. So the first probability of getting the first red marble will be 5 out of 7 because you have 5 red with 7 marbles inside it. And for the second pick, your sample space will change. It will change into 6 and the probability of the event will also be changed into 4 because uh, the possibility of getting the first um, marble, which is red, is al already con being considered. That's why this is a dependent event, because the first pick will be dependent on the second pick. So that's why we call it a dependent event. Now, sometimes we can create an independent or dependent event in a single experiment. In this case, our experiment is to find the probability of getting certain um, marbles in a jar with five red and two blue, two blue marbles. So if you'll notice, it's the same set of marbles that we used on the previous slide. However, how can we make it dependent and independent? Now, it's going to be dependent if the problem states that the rule is without replacement. So you're not replacing the ball or the marble inside the jar when you pick the first marble. So let's say you have two chances of picking uh, a marble and you're supposed to... Uh, get two red marbles in the process. So on the first try, the probability is still 5 out of 7, but on the second try, it will change into 4 out of 6 because the marble is not supposed to be replaced in the jar. However, it will become independent if in the rule, it's stated there that it should be uh, with replacement. So every time you pick a, board, bo um, a marble, you will replace the marble, you will put the marble back into the jar and then proceed to your... Um, um, probability. So the first probability of getting a red marble will be 5 out of 7, but since you will return the marble, whatever color it is, it may be blue or red, the probability will still be the same. It'll still be 5 out of 7. So no matter how many try you make in this particular probability, the probability of getting the red marble will still be the same. So that's why it's independent event. Yeah. 
Now, there are two operations that we can work on um, in using events that's independent. So make sure that your experiment is an independent experiment before you can try this particular operation. So we have an addition and multiplication rule in independent events. The first one is P or probability of A or B is the same as or equal to probability of A plus probability of B. And in multiplication rule, probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. Just make sure that the experiment is independent, otherwise the formula will not work. So make sure it's independent. So in this case, we are rolling two dice on the first example. And on the first example, we're trying to find the probability of getting a sum of 3 or the probability of getting a sum of 5. So we have two events that we need to combine by using the OR operation, which means you're simply adding the probability of the first event and the probability of the second event. The probability of the first event will give you 2 out of 36 because there are only two events that will give you a sum of 3 when you roll a die, which is out of 36, which is your sample space. And for the probability of uh, event B, which is getting the sum of 5, its probability will be equal to 4 out of 36. So notice that the sample space is still the same because this is an independent event. So your answer will just be uh, the sum of these two fractions because it falls under the addition property or ad addition rule of probability. So 3 out of 36 will give you 17%. So that means the probability of event A or event B from happening is 17%. Now in a multiplication uh, problem, we have here rolling a single die and on this particular problem, we're looking for the probability of getting a 4 and then another 4 when we roll a single die twice. So the first event, when you roll a 4, the probability is 1 out of 6 and then you roll it again, the probability of getting a 4 is also 1 out of 6. But the question is, what is the probability that when you roll it twice or two consecutive times, the result will be 4 and 4. And here's your probability. It falls under the multiplication rule. So probability of A is 1 sixth. Probability of B is also 1 sixth. Multiply them together, you will have 2.8%. So the probability of this happening is 2.8%.